So uh, my name is uh, George Borovas. I'm a partner with uh, Sherman and Sterling. I've lived here. I've lived here in Japan uh, for the past six years, and I've been advising uh, Japanese banks, sponsors, financial institutions on the project development finance uh, projects around the world. Uh, I'm particularly excited about this uh, forum as well as this uh, panel because um, I have a great love for Japan having lived here for the past uh, few years, uh, but also because of my Greek heritage, I have uh, a great love for the shipping and the shipbuilding industry. And I think there's a lot to be discussed here. As you know, uh, shipping in Japan has become is one of the key industries of this country. Uh, it dates back to the modern shipbuilding industry, dates back to the Meiji Restoration. It's uh, a key industry for the post-war economy in Japan. And although it's facing strong competition from China and Korea, there's still over a thousand shipyards in Japan that uh, produce a, a, a number of vessels. So we have a distinguished panel this uh, afternoon to talk about this, uh, um, this sh Japanese shipbuilding industry uh, and from a different perspective. First of all, I'm going to start to my left, um, Mr. Kosuke Takechi, yes. who's the Executive Officer, Chief Operating Officer for Marubeni Corporation, responsible for Aerospace and Ship Division. Uh, Mr. Takashi Nakabe, fifth generation president of Onomichi Dockyard Company. His great great grandfather started the Hamanes Tioten Company, which is the predecessor of Onomichi, which is very impressive. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Abe uh, is the Managing Officer and Chief Technology Officer of Technology Division to Japan Marine United with a distinguished 42 year career in the industry. Mr. Carlos Pena is the Commercial Director for CTM with a global career in the industry over the past 30 years. And last but not least, my compatriot, Mr. George Kaklamanos, uh, Sale and Purchase Managing Director for the TMS group of companies with over 30 years experience in all commercial shipping. So. Just as an introduction, I will ask each of the panelists to talk a little bit about themselves and their company's relationship with the Japanese shipping, shipyards, and, and industry. Yes, Mr. Takeshi, no, here. Uh, good afternoon, uh, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, my name is Takeshi from Marubeni Corporation. Uh, Marubeni Corporation is one of the major trading houses in Japan. Uh, we've been established in 1858, so we have uh, 160 years uh, uh, history in the companies. We have uh, 130 overseas branch uh, over the world. When it comes to the uh, shipping activity, uh, we are trading house. So our main role is firstly for the ship trading business, uh, also the vessel owning, a primary bulk carrier and uh, uh, LNG carrier. Uh, also, we're doing a uh, lot of investment in shipping field. That's it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, nakabe -san. Yes. It's okay. Yes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Takashi Nakabe from Onomichi Dockyard. Uh, my shipyard is building the, mainly the product tanker in Onomichi Dockyard. And also uh, in Japan, the, in Kyushu Island, I'm operating the one more shipyard in uh, Saiki Heavy Industry. Uh, they are building the mainly barrel carriers. And also uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, I'm operating the Kolomo Dockyard. Unfortunately, they have a big terror the, the last few weeks, but still they are running the, the business. Uh, actually, uh, the, I'm operating the three shipyards in, uh, in Japan and Sri Lanka. Uh, so far, the, as you know, the ship building market is a little bit tough, but you know, the, the we are already, uh, the, our history is more than the, uh, 75 years, uh, 75, 77 years. Uh, we established uh, 1943. So after that, you know, that we started uh, mainly the doing the commercial vessel. And especially uh, Onomichi has uh, you know, the long history for building the product carrier. So if you have uh, any uh, intention, please let, let me know. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, Abe-sensei. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Story, Nihongo de onegai itashimasu. Japan Marine United no gizutsu honbucho o shiteorimasu. Abe to moshimasu. Dozo yoroshiku. Gozonji no kata mo oi ka to mon desu ga, atakashi doko no kaisha wa kyu, え、
新しいスタイルになって、えー、そうですね、今、6年目と、今年から7年目ですね、という会社でございます。日本各地にです、ね、5箇所の心臓の造船所を持っておりまして、まあ、大型船の VL から艦艇、小型船含めて、全体メニューを増やしているという状況でございます。えーまあ、造船の状況というのは、私、実はもう造船業界、40年を超えるほど勤めてますけれども、えー、エンジョイできた時期ってあんまりないんですね、常に厳しい状況の中にいましたけれども。特に最近のこの環境規制の厳しさについてはかなりポジティブに考えておりましてやっと技術で走れる時代が来たんじゃないかなというふうに捉えてございます。どうぞよろしくお願いします。Thank you very much, Mr. Sensei. Mr. Peno. Good afternoon.、Uh, my name is Carlos Peña. I'm working in CTM. We are a manager and an owner of almost 180 ships in the Balker sector. We go from Handy Max s up to Newcastle Max. We have been in Japan for, for many, many years, even in our former company called c o e c l e r i c y We have built and managed many Japanese ships during the years. Currently, we are managing probably the two largest p o o l on the, on the sector in the Supramax and in the Capes. Plus, a series of two or three companies where we are either buying or chartering mainly Japanese tonnage. Thank you very much. Mr. Kaklamanos. Good evening,、uh, everybody.、Uh, my name is George Kaklamanos.、Uh, I work for the、uh, TMS Group、uh, in Athens, Greece,、um, Mr. Economus、uh, Company.、Uh, I have been with the group since uh, 97. Uh, I'm in responsible in the commercial sector of all the new buildings,、uh, second hand sales, and projects. Our company owns and operates 125 ships, and we recently did uh, 11 uh, new building、uh, contracts for LNG carriers in Korea. Unfortunately, the Japanese compatriots were very expensive for us. <laughs> so, thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> so, this, that's why I'm here to try and see if we can、uh, you know, <laughs> trim the pencil a little bit. So,、um, on that note,、uh, I will say、um, uh, it's an honor for me to be in Japan and to、uh, be able to、uh, say our opinion on the topics that uh, uh, the panelists will have to discuss today. Thank you very much.、Um, so, maybe we can start from that because I think it's a very interesting topic of how do you see today's Japanese、uh, shipyards and ship market and how does it become more competitive in this very, very difficult global market? Are there initiatives from government that are supporting the industry,、uh, financing options that perhaps the industry、uh, globally is not very much aware of?、And、I was wondering if you can comment on that.、Uh, I don't know, Takeshi san, if you want to start. Let's see.、Uh, I feel、uh, in comparison with the other nations, such as Korea and China,、uh, Japanese governmental support is very limited. And as uh, most of you、uh, uh, may know, that the JBIC. Uh, governmental Financial uh, Institute supporting uh, export uh, credit uh, to facilitate uh, export uh, vessel to the overseas countries.、Uh, but、uh, that's very limited. And、uh, on the other hand,、uh, other nations such as k o r e a n China are、uh, doing uh, support uh, to the shipyard who have been、uh, financial problems,、uh, which、uh, cause the serious problem to the industries that understand. This problem is、uh, not only Japanese industry, but also、uh, worldwide industry. Thank you very much.、Uh, Nakabe san, do you have any thoughts?、Uh, you know, the government policy, no, please ask the Japanese government. And also,、uh, <laughs> the best, best scenario is i m p o r t e r Donald Trump and also talk about、uh, Chinese、uh, government about this, you know, the, the government、uh, subsidies. But I think this is a quite, quite a big headache for, to be honest, a big headache for us, the, the, not only the China, but also Korean the governmental、uh, subsidies. The, as you know, the Japanese shipyards,、uh, we are 100% private companies, and also、uh, we have to make, our,、uh, make a profit by, our,、uh, by ourselves. But compared to them,、uh, almost no support from the government, and also our, our taxation the ratio is very high compared to other you know, nations. 
So under this situation, uh, we have to you know compete against uh, for such a kind of you know the other uh, shipyards in all over the world. But on the other hand, you know we have a very long history and also many many clients in the all over the world. Uh, still, you know the, not all of them, but some of them are waiting the very good vessel from Japanese shipyards. That's why uh, our the main the, the scenario is uh, keep the, our quality and also not only the vessel quality but also. Uh, uh, business uh, quality, I think. So this is a very, very important issue for uh, 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 survive. And one more thing is uh, my shipyard is uh, uh, not so big shipyard uh, like a Hyundai, you know. Um, my uh, strategy is uh, like uh, the cockroach. Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, Hyundai is a dinosaur and uh, we are cockroach. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, cockroach. <laughs> so, but you know, the dinosaurs is a big giant, a big, and also a king. And uh, but you know, the, if the circumstance change, and also uh, they, if they lose uh, to, to to find uh, uh, food, uh, if they lose uh, such a kind of opportunity, so they cannot survive. But you know, the cockro in case of cockroach, we can survive a very small, tiny, you know, the food. <laughs> so uh, my policy is like that. That's all. Thank you. Th thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. あ、別に、ちょっと、あの、竹内さん、それから、あの、中部さんおっしゃられたようにですね、え、日本の、ま、オーソリティの支援という意味では、え、ま、もどかしい思いがあります。要するに、協力な支援というのはなかなかでにく
a lot of people, including Chinese, they're buying second-hand assets and they have a mandate to only buy Japanese uh, units, even built in 2000 and 2001. Last year, I sold uh, 11 Japanese units belonging to our company to the Chinese industrial players uh, just for the fact that they were built in Japan. The problem that uh, the Japanese industry has is that the prices are prohibited for international owners like my owner. Although we have a big appetite for a lot of cockroaches, uh, we, cannot, uh, we, we, we cannot just come and say, okay, we're going to sacrifice uh, uh, our policy for doing the business in Tokyo or in Imabari or whatever. Um, I believe the Japanese government has to really look seriously into helping and assisting uh, the shipyards in Japan. They are the best. They know how to build the ship. They are always on time. They are not very flexible when it comes to, uh, you know, trying to make modifications to the specification, and I, we understand that. But on the other hand, they have an excellent uh, product to market, and most of the Greeks now, uh, the new generation, uh, are starting to become um, very interested in building ships for the future. It's not just a speculation. Uh, you don't buy a ship today and you sell it in three, four months uh, when the price goes up by three, four times when uh, you sold the ship. That was the old traditional uh, captain's way uh, from the island of Hios. They will build their ships for, for life and they will name them. Usually the first ship was uh, under the name of their wife. The second ship was under the name of their mistress. So, <laughs> so, so uh, the idea is that um, Yes, we would like to come to Japan, we would like to be your clients, but please give us some incentive. Uh, like in the States, they say two for the price of one. I'm not going to ask for that, but <laughs> maybe two for the price of one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Baklama. So let me reverse this, uh, since I want to go back to the customers, right? And we hear this story over and over again with Japanese exports. The international market in any product, they say Japanese quality is the best, delivery is the best. Whenever I deal with Japanese, I never ever have any regrets. Uh, but at the, in the end of the day, it's just too damn expensive and I just can't, can't afford it. So is it just price? Is there something else that you can do in order to make the package more competitive? Are you, fun are you familiar with the Japanese financing institutions, JBIC and Nexi and all the support that they give? Um, is there things during the negotiation of all these issues that you think they could improve on based on your experience with the Koreans and the Chinese? Uh, actually, that's a very good question. Um, we have never built a ship in uh, Japan, although I came several times to uh, participate and, and do discussions uh, with certain yards. Um, the number two major reasons why we could not proceed, uh, number one was obviously the price uh, and the very stiff uh, terms that the contract dictates, including uh, payment terms and so forth, um, which of course the Greeks, they like to be a little bit more uh, challenging on that. They like to have, uh, not the benefit of the doubt, but they like to have a little bit of the upper hand in terms of trying to negotiate the spec, having a little bit more flexibility and so forth. In Japan, things are as you see it, black or white. It's, not, it's, not, it's either black or white. It's not, you know, something in between. So we have to respect that, and we have respected that. Uh, we are now looking into perhaps doing something in Japan, but the main problem, like I said, is pricing. On the, on the second question about the financing, uh, we were here last year. We made a road tour, um, uh, visiting a lot of uh, trading houses as well as uh, banks and uh, financial institutions. Um, there's plenty of money to be given uh, to uh, international companies like us. We do have the credentials to uh, become qualified for this uh, type of financing. But uh, again, because we have to stretch the dollar as much as we can, because we own and operate 125 ships, and myself, I have done at least 120 new buildings for the company from 97 to today. Uh, we have to be careful how we're going to stretch the dollar and pay for the uh, uh, obligations we have under the contracts. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Peña, did you have anything else to add on, on, on the issue of competitiveness? Well, I, I think the financing side in Japan is, is very good. Uh, there is no difficult to access to capital to go for, for new building. But what I think is important is the speed. Sometimes in, in, in Japan, the process tend to take too long. 
and uh, the dynamics of the market. Maybe today we would like to buy or charter a ship, and in six months later we, we don't have the same appetite or the same approach. So that is something that internally in Japan you should try to improve. Uh, and, 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 and if you can try to put Western clients at the same level that local clients as well, because sometimes we see different kind of deals than to the majors, which are, I understand are the main clients, uh, the Moel, the Nweke, et cetera. But sometimes we feel that we don't have the opportunity to participate on those, on, on those auctions. Thank cetera. you very much. Uh, Takechi-san, put, I'll put you a little bit on the spot here because you represent the trading houses and you have the unique um, advantage and viewpoint of understanding right. financing and project integration and project delivery. So how do you read all this? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, attractiveness of the Japanese shipyard is uh, not only their quality and the productivity, but also the, uh, supported by the Japanese clusters uh, among the Japanese uh, ship owners, uh, Japanese uh, manufacturers, and also the trading house and the financial institute. That combination may create uh, sometimes you know, additional value uh, to the ships to be built by Japan. Mm -hmm. Because those cluster people basically prefer to, you know, uh, do the deal ships to be built by Japan. That uh, should be taken into consideration for the evaluations. But uh, I admit, uh, sometimes Japanese companies are a bit slow, so sometimes lost the chance of the market that uh, we have to change, and uh, we have to be more incremented uh, innovations we have to do. Um, let me ask uh, from the shipyard's perspective, is there anything that you think you can do to lower price? to be quicker? Or do you think that this is the way that it's going to be done? Uh, <coughs> very difficult question. So, <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know, the, the, our bidding cost comes from not only the, the steel plate price, but also a labor cost and every, many, many issues. And also, especially exchange rate, also uh, the big portion for us. Uh, you know, the, all of them, they're quite, quite difficult to control by me. Uh, and also, uh, uh, but you know, the, the, for, for my sh for, from my point of view, the three elements, the uh, exchange rate, the steel plate price, market. If I miss the three of them, maybe bankruptcy. If I miss two of them, the still survive. If I, made, uh, if I miss the one of them, uh, make, maybe shipyard can make a profit, something like that. So, but we are losing the, now the all of them now. The exchange rate is uh, still very hard for us, and the uh, steel plate is a very, you know, the happy price because of Olympic game in Japan, you know. So uh, very, very high steam consum uh, steel consumption in Japan. That's why price goes up very much. And also the uh, market is uh, quite di difficult. So now we are losing the, the three of them. So that's why uh, the, we have to, uh, how can I say, change a little bit from cockroach to something. And uh, my view is, uh, of course, you know, the, the everybody say the Japanese business is a little bit slow and also very stiff and very, you know, the conservative. So uh, in my shipyard, in my case, you know, uh, every time I reply in, in a day, very quickly, <laughs> and also I quote, maybe attractive price sometime. <laughs> so uh, please ask the Odomichi Doker, maybe you can find some other, another, you know, the answers. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Abe Sensei, did you want to add anything to that? Hi, ano kakaku to desu ne. Ma, watashi demo no cost to no wa hijou ni ano ironna ima yoso ga karami atte mashite. Chotto kantan ni kono ba de ano setsumi ya shinikui in desu kere domo. Sukunaku tomo watashi demo no kaisha de wa sara ni desu ne. Nihon no zousen gyo. え、先ほどあの、皆さんからもですね、生産性高いというふうにま、褒めていただいたんですが、まだまだというふうに思ってまして、え、ま、全体のコストのうちの3割ぐらいがま、生産の方で出てくるコストなんですけども、ここがまだ
。もう一つはですね、これはあの価格を上げるということでは、あ、ごめんなさい、下げるということではないんですけども、えー、そうですね、ジョージさんが納得できる価格、これは何かというと、まあ一生使っている間に必ずキャッシュあの、えー、エンジョイできる。初期投資といいう,うに持っていきたい、えー、まああの直接的に言いますとですねやはり一生の燃費それからメンテナンスコスト等々で、えー、きちんとしたあ裏付けがあればですね日本で作った時にかかる費用をお客様も、えー、出してもらえるんじゃないかなと。いうふうに期待するところで、まあ、それを私どもは技術の中では追求すると、一方、生産面では徹底的にまだまだコストを下げる必要があるなというふうに認識しています。Thank you very much,、uh, Abe Sensei. That's a, a fabulous argument and you know, something that we've seen in other industries, in the nuclear industry, which is dear to my heart. When you look at this from the initial cost, it might be very expensive, but when you look at the lifetime cost, it is actually extremely competitive. So you're basically saying of repackaging the product that you're offering in a different way so the market to understand that. But that, I think, would take some education to the market to make them understand what it is that they're buying.、Uh, and they're not just buying a ship, but they're buying a whole life cycle、uh, product. Uh, that's very, very interesting.、Uh, another aspect of this, of course, is looking at different products. And we had the great presentation by Dr. Stopford before to talk about we're looking at the new generation of ships now, better quality, environmental. From that perspective,、um, what do you see from innovation from your companies that, you can,、uh, that will allow you to ask for a better premium, for better pricing, because you have better products than the, your competitors? Can you talk a little bit about that from the shipyard's perspective of what kind of new equipment, new machines you're developing? My shipyard? Yes. Okay. <laughs>、uh, my shipyard, Ono Michi Doka, now we are con、uh, not concerned with、uh, studying. Uh, developing a new type of main engine.、Uh, this engine concentrates burning only for MGO, Maringa soil.、Uh, as you know, the, this coming 2020, the, the IMO regulate、uh, global cap, and also、uh, every vessel h a v e to switch the fuel or、uh, install the scrubber. Of course, you know, the, the depends on type of、uh, vessel, depends on、uh, amount of consumption. The, we're gonna we, we should provide many you know, the, the solutions, I think. Especially,、uh, we are building the MRO tankers or a small handy size、uh, in my shipyard. The, both of them, the consumption is,、uh, you know, in the daily consumption, is、uh, almost in the, between the 10 tons and 11 tons, uh, such a, you know, the not big numbers. So, it means、uh, if we install the scrubber,、uh, it's、uh, quite, quite difficult to, to, for payback、uh, within the two or three years、uh, because of the price of the scrubber. Now, on the other hand, you know, the, now we、uh, try to install the MGO Marine Gas Oil Monofuel Engine the, because、uh, the Marine Gas Oil、uh, it doesn't need、uh, heating you know,、uh, in the port. So、uh, it means a、uh, small handy size, sometimes MRO tankers, you know, that depends on operations. But uh, uh, in many cases, the, such a kind of smaller vessel s t a y in the port half of a year or something. So 180 days every day, the, such a kind of vessel heating up for fuel, I mean, heavy fuel. Even if you know, the, the component fuel also needs heating. So it means、uh, at least one, one point something to、uh, 1.5 tons of such a kind of fuel、uh, they are consuming for heating up the fuel. On the other hand, you know, the, if you use、uh, MGO, so we can skip the, this you know, the consumption completely. And also,、uh, uh, in case of b a r r e l carrier, we try to skip omit the boiler the, because no, no, we don't have to heat up the fuel. So, only for accommodation heating, the, maybe uh, we uh, don't keep boiler, smaller boiler, or such a, sometimes the electric heater is、uh, enough. So, and also, we can skip the many you know, steam lines, so you can save the、uh, maintenance cost also. The, up to now, the shipyard, ship owner, all the time that we try to add machinery to apply the new regulations. But、uh, you know, the, if I see the, the real daily、uh, seaman's life, you know, almost you know, the, 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 their work is、uh, getting, going to the limitation, the maybe、uh, overwork. And also, sometimes they're going to make, maybe in the future, they're going to make, make a big mistake you know, the, for operating the, such a kind of so many machinery, I think. So, from that, that point of view, the, in the history, all the time, the simple vessel p r o v i d e the ship owner the big profit. This is my the,、uh, philosophy. And also,、uh, 
uh, back to this philosophy, if I provide you a, a single fuel engine, you don't have to change over the fuel, you don't have to worry about the environment, you don't have to worry about the consumption. So we can provide you many, many you know, the aspects. So this is my uh, pro uh, plan. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That was really, really useful. Uh, Abisan, did you want to talk a little bit about technology and innovation? えっと トライをしてたんですけども、ここまでの要求が出てくるとこれはもうとてもじゃないということで、え、1本の集中した部門を新しく作りまして、え、今言った え、ま、あの、いろんな条件によるんですけども、ま、私ども いうことで、実はあの、日本の造船所は特徴的にですね、ま、あの、造船業界の中でもそういった動きもしたいですし、もっと もう、その殻を破ってどんどん、え、そういった議論と開発を一緒にやっていくという、もう、ま、今に、今がこのチャンスだなと、入りたいなというふうに、ま、認識してます。Thank you very much. Thank you. Um in, in that respect and I will stick a little bit with the uh, of, uh, the industry here. Do you think that the Japanese uh, shipping uh, shipyard industry is uh needs consolidation? It needs to have more integration in order to be able to become more competitive, or do you think that its current status is, is okay the way it is? I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, uh, both uh, Nakabe-san and uh, Abe-san. Uh, I said uh, I'm a cockroach, so that's why I, I consolidated. <laughs> I'm, I'm not keeping the, the same style. But, uh, uh, you know, the, if I say the consolidation, but you know, the, the definition of the consolidation is uh, the many things, you know, I think. Uh, for example, you know the, the like uh, the Mitsubishi heavy industry, the JMU, the such a big company. I mean, uh, in case of Japan, the listed company is uh, quite quite difficult to uh, merge together with like my company, the ownership company. But you know, the, to be honest, the president of the Japan Marine United, Mr. Chiba, I talked to, I, I visited his office, and also I talk about uh, sharing the collaborate. Uh, uh, design or something. And also, same thing, you know, I talked to uh, Mr. Higaki in the Imabari Shipyard, uh, the how about uh, sharing the uh, design or something. Mm. The, because almost in reaching the uh, limitation to to make uh, some, you know, the difference between, the, for example, my shipyard design and the Imabari design or some other shipyard design. The, if I, I sell the, the same product in the same market, all the time, the price is the same. Maybe a uh, shipyard cannot get any, you know, the, the margins. So uh, under such a kind of situation, so we should make some other, you know, the difference, like, like Abesan said, you know, the, I mean, the main engine or some other issues. So, but, you know, the, if I try to provide uh, such a kind of difference, 
do we have to invest huge money for main engine study main, uh, uh, as a, you know, the, the investment? So uh, of course, you know, the, we cannot afford to pay such a kind of money. So, but you know, the, if I see the automobile, automobile industries, you know, the Toyota, Nissan, the, many, many automobile industries, uh, they are collaborate uh, each other, the, each one, one by one. So uh, the, the, I agree with uh, the, such a kind of activities, and also uh, we, I, I personally already started in my shipyard, you know, the, uh, doing the MR tanker business. But you know, the, of course, you know, the, uh, compared to Hyundai Mipo, we are losing the flexibility, like you said. So uh, especially the uh, design, uh, uh, design part, that we don't have any, you know, the, the flexibility. That's why because of the capacity of the, the design department. So, but you know, if I can use the JMU capacity or uh, Imabari capacity for together with the developing the, such a kind of a new design, so this is very not not only happy for us but also happy for ship owner side. So this is my uh, plan. Thank you very much. And and, and indeed, you know, in, in every industry and in every project, we have collaboration collaboration risk sharing. It is something that re reduces the risk for everybody, reduces the prices in the long term, and repetition, doing the same thing over and over and getting, getting it better and better all the time. I think that's something that reduces the cost. Um, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to ask uh, something from the customer side. Uh, when you're looking at the future in the next 10, 15 years, at what kind of ships do you see the industry is going to be heading for lo looking at new build? What kind of uh, uh, new build facilities are you going to be looking at? There's no doubt in my mind, at least, that uh, LNG is the future. Um, three uh, fundamental uh, points why I believe that is that the LNG is in abundance, the LNG is, uh, does not pollute, and the LNG is the cheapest form of energy you can find on the earth these days. BP and Shell and companies, uh, energy players like that, they're investing billions of dollars in restructuring uh, their strategic moves for uh, accommodating LNG for the future. I think the ships um, probably, uh, it might be maybe more than 10 years from now, but within now and 10 years, I will say that a lot of owners are going to start looking for another solution, not just scrubbers or not just uh, switching to the fuel Maybe they will, they will have a you know, thrive engine where you can use also LNG for the future, uh, not just for only for the big container vessels or the VLCCs, but also for maybe um, you know, uh, Suez Max tankers and up to Afro Max tankers. On smaller ships, it doesn't pay to, to, to use LNG. So I will say, I will, I will draw the line maybe uh, between Suez Max and uh, VLCC and, and on the dry cargo vessels, only the large capes. Uh, 200,000 deadweight capes, they should be probably uh, running on LNG in the future because uh, everything has to do with uh, the price of steel. That's, uh, you like it or not, that's how the shipping is dictated, especially in the dry cargo vessel. The steel, uh, the price right now is about $95 uh, per metric ton. Uh, if it breaks the 100 mark, uh, the industry is going to have troubles and you guys are going to be all cockroaches. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Peña, do you have anything else yeah, to add? I, on that? I, I tend to agree with George. Uh, the, in terms of fuel, we're going to, to, to LNG. But I, I think it's also important that the ships probably will have more automatization. I think, they, as, as uh, Nakabe san was saying, the human managing too many machines is also could be too complicated. So we, we will have more technology on the ships that will bring possible better returns for the, for, for the charters or owners. We have to optimize when the weather is not fantastic. We need to, to have the proper hull design. So I, I think at the end, uh, it is cheaper cost, but also better an improvement on the, on, on the automatization. And the humans, uh, we made mistakes and the machine a little bit less. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left and I just wanted to go into one slightly different subject. Uh, we talked a little bit about international activities and that you own shipyards in different countries. Um, do you think that is an activity that uh, Japanese shipyards are going to be interested in, in joint ventures abroad doing uh, work in different countries? Uh, has it been a success for you, or do you think it's uh, difficult for Japanese uh, shipbuilding industry? Mm. It, it, this is also a quite you know difficult question. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> You know, the, the, before talking about uh, these topics, you know, the, the, we have to think about the nationalities, you know. The, the little bit of time ago, the Mitsubishi shipyard, you know, go to China and also uh, make a shake hands and also, I don't know, if, uh, 
first going to happen for, for future uh, together with uh, Yan Zhejiang. But uh, the, the, some of them, some Japanese you know, shipyard side and also a shipping company also wondering the, the Mitsui becoming the Chinese company or something like that, and uh, we are worried about that very much, to be honest. You know. On the other hand, if I employ, the, the, for example, Chinese the labor, the more than 50% in my own shipyard, the which is Japanese company. So this is, uh, definition is uh, quite difficult. So that's why uh, we have to keep our you know, the business mind, we have to keep our business uh, attitude and also a quality. But you know, the, if you see the, my shipyard, more than 50% of the people are Japan, Chinese or some, some other ch nationalities. So it, the, maybe the, some people worry about, oh, Nakabe-san, you are operating the Japanese shipyard, but you know, the many nationalities are there, so uh, where is the Japanese or something like that? So, but you know, the, how to keep the, our you know, the business policy and also our business habit, this is a, a key issue. So that's why uh, before talking about the joint venture, uh, we have to see, we have to recognize the, the ship, shipyard side, uh, ship owner side. What is your, uh, how can I say, uh, requirement uh, for uh, to a Japanese shipyards? Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the, everybody say the quality, the business habit, and everything. But but this is a quite quite you know the difficult you know the, to say uh, specific, not number, not nothing you know. Mm -hmm. So. That's why uh, that we have to figure out and definite the what is Japanese the advantage. So before we talking about the making a joint venture, joint venture. I think. Okay, interesting. Um, anybody else want to add anything to this topic about uh, foreign investments? I think we covered uh, most okay. of the topics. Uh, okay. Um, well, I think our time is up. Uh, I want to thank our panel very much for this so wonderful, wonderful discussion. Very interesting. I learned a lot personally, and thank you very much. Thank you.